So, I was just doing my own thing, you know, making videos while I was watching Jurassic Park. Then it hit me. Who would win? Rexy from the JP franchise or a paleontologically accurate Tyrannosaurus Rex? Now, I'll be honest, this video was kind of meant for last week for, you know, the T-Rex day, but we'll just put that aside and let's get through it. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host and for today's video, we have these two opponents going head to head. The Queen of Isla Nublar against the Tyrant Lizard King. Now against a piece of fiction, I think it's only right that we use the peak of an accurate Tyrannosaurus. So that's what I'll be doing in today's video. And just to make it clear, we will be stripping Rexy from her plot armor. Because what's the fun in a battle if the creature just has plot armor to carry them to victory? Anyways, let's get started. Rexy is one of the most powerful dinosaurs in the JP franchise. In terms of terrestrial theropods, I say she's only behind the Indominus Rex and Giganotosaurus. This is supported by various statements putting forth that she was one of the most powerful dinosaurs prior to Ivor's creation. The Queen of Nubla is said to measure around 13.5 meters in length and stand at 4.2 meters at the hips. Now her weight is a bit back and forth, but as far as statements go, I'd put her around the 9.5 ton range, which is above the average of an accurate T-Rex. With this size, she comes packed with strength, being capable of throwing a 6 ton Indominus Rex and her male counterpart from Isla Sauna was capable of destroying a bus with a single hit. Her size also provides her with solid durability feats. Throughout the franchise, we see her taking punishment and getting back up. She sustained damage from attacks from the Big One, Indominus Rex, and Giganotosaurus, all of which she survived. Though to be fair, without intervention in many of her fights, she probably would have been put down for good. When comparing this with an accurate T-Rex, we see a bit of a size difference between fiction and reality. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was the pinnacle of theropod evolution. Using the largest detailed Rex known, ED Cope, it would have likely measured an approximate 13 meters in length and 4 meters at the hips. So, they're close in that regard, but the weight is where a clear difference is observed. The upper scale of this Rex would have placed it at 12.4 tons. I mean, this amount of weight would have allowed it to become a living, breathing super predator. This massive size made it both incredibly strong and durable. For example, paleontologist Denver Fowler suggested that T-Rex itself had enough strength in its jaws and neck to be capable of ripping the skull of a Triceratops from its body. Not only this, but if we look at smaller specimens, such as Stan, it sustained broken bones within its neck, supported by two vertebrae being fused together and a third being immobilized due to excessive bone growth and we know a velociraptor isn't doing that so that means that another tyrannosaurus bit it and yet it survived a hit in a critical area like that should have put it down for good so imagine if we scale that up to cope size who weighed approximately multiple tons more than stan and we have a durable rex rexy is also one of the fastest large theropods throughout the franchise with her peak speed reaching 51 kilometers per hour she was also capable of evading helicopter sight over a brief period of time however with all that speed she somehow couldn't catch up to Claire in Jurassic World, but we'll let that slide. In terms of agility, we can see that she's one agile behemoth. She was capable of tagging and catching velociraptors in her fight in Jurassic Park. Not only this, but she was capable of reacting and attacking both the Indom and Giga. And yes, though she lost those fights, that was to do more with durability and strength. In William Seller's article, it is suggested that an accurate T-Rex, like many other theropods, weren't capable of running, instead having to rely on a speed walk. With biomechanical regenerations, it is estimated that our real Rex could have only reached speeds of 19 kilometers an hour. Now for its size, this speed is definitely not too bad, but compare that to Rex's 51 kilometers per hour and we see that the real Tyrannosaurus wouldn't be able to catch up to Rex here. Yet all hope isn't lost, as according to Eric Snively and his team, it appears that the Tyrannosaurus could have had an impressive amount of agility for its size. In fact, it would have been twice as great with turns and fast movements when compared to other theropods. Now, I doubt this would put it on the same level as agility as Rexy, but I think it provides it the ability to keep up and tag Rexy throughout the fight. When it comes to weaponry, it's practically the same as comparing apples to, well, slightly worse off apples. These are T-Rexes. Obviously, their primary weapon is going to be their jaws. When it comes to Rexy, I see various statements about her by force, but since it commonly puts her at around 57,000 newtons of force, we'll have it at that. This is the peak binding force that Bates and Falkingham placed for a T Rex in 2012. Rexy also seems to rely on headbutts quite a bit, being known within the franchise to have one of the most powerful skulls amongst all the dinosaurs. This allows for both pushing back opposition as well as dealing devastating blows. 
By judging that Rex's bite was based on real life studies, we can hence use the same argument to scale up our pig science Rex. Using ED Cope as our basis, we can assume that since it weighed 3 tons more than Rexy, as well as weighing around 4 tons more than the Rexes used in the study, that it is more likely that he had a far greater bite force and hence damage output. Not only this, but with their large and heavy duty skull, it was likely that they were also capable of ramming opponents. Jack Horner even discovered evidence of pachyostosis in the skull region, which is bone growth that increases the bone density within the skull, similar to that of the pachycephalosaurus. This would reinforce their skull and increase their damage and durability within ramming attacks. Despite not being as intelligent as let's say the Jurassic Park Velociraptors, Rexy is still quite an impressive dinosaur. She was smart enough to test the electric fences before escaping her paddock in Jurassic Park 1. She was able to recognize Blue as an ally when taking on the Indominus Rex, and she utilized the Therizinosaurus when combating the Giganotosaurus. Clearly with these feats alone, she demonstrates an understanding of her environment as well as combat. Now I'll be first to say that I don't particularly think that our real Rexes had the same level of intelligence as Rexy, yet I wouldn't count them out. After studies were completed by Kavoka et al, as well as Suzuna Hazel, it showed that they were between the intelligence of crocodiles to potentially primates. Now I know what you're going to say, that is a massive in between, but I just think about it like this. Within film, we often place human ideals and intelligence among some of these creatures, and I think that was the case for Rexy. And because of that, it's made her smarter within the franchise when you compare her from Jurassic Park 1 to, well, Jurassic World. So yeah, I do think that Rexy is a bit smarter. When it comes to sensors, this is the category where Rexy lacks the most in battle. Now as far as smell and hearing goes, it'd probably be as good as dinosaurs go, yet we haven't seen too many displays of it. However, anyone who's watched the first Jurassic Park knows that her eyesight is abysmal. If anyone just remains still in front of her, then she's unable to see them. Movement-based vision was just a wildly inaccurate addition which has led to a weakness in this battle. And in real life, it appears that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was the complete opposite of the JP Rex. When taking a look at Graham Hughes' 2019 research, the T-Rex had twice the capability of picking up scent than that of a turkey vulture. You know. The same vulture which can locate bodies emitting the smallest gases from hundreds of feet in the air. And the biggest difference? It has to be eyesight. According to Stephen's 2006 article, it said that the Rex had a superior eyesight than even that of current hawks, being able to see over 6 kilometers. So it looks like our real Rex is making a bit of a comeback here. Throughout her over three decade lifespan, Rexy has been a part of many battles and hunts, which has collated into an impressive battle like Hugh. Her major battles include the battle against the big one, the other against the Indominus Rex, as well as being against the Giganotosaurus. Now you may say, hey, Rexy pretty much got destroyed by both the large carnivals. Yet you have to understand that those two are the strongest dinosaurs in the franchise, so it's understandable that Rexy wouldn't be able of putting him down. However, my issue comes up when we look at the battle in Camp Cretaceous when she was put up against the smaller Tarbosaurus. It was shown that she performed rather poorly where a distraction is what allowed her to gain the victory. Her battle IQ also would have improved being that she reigned over Nubla between Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. She would have hunted various dinosaurs and that included attempting to take down a Brachiosaurus. Keyword being attempt. But because of that, it's clear that she's been in multiple battles. Now, she may have not been performing at her best, but let's see how the real Rex will compare to that. Now, at Accurate Rex may not have been taking on those gnarly hybrids, but they are still veterans of combat. In terms of their prey, they would have hunted herbivores such as, well, the Ankylosaurus. You know, the same Ankylosaurus which would have weighed 4 to 8 tons, was covered in armor, and a club tail which could destroy bone? Or what about the Triceratops, a creature which likely weighed upwards of 10 tons, and had horns measuring over a meter in length, which could critically penetrate and take down a Rex for good. T-Rex also hunted the Edmontosaurus, which rivaled the average Rex in weight, and was twice as fast, which shows that the Rex was capable of adapting to tackling prey faster and more agile than itself. There's also a couple of theories out there where I've seen that a T-Rex may have even hunted the sauropod Almasaurus, which would have weighed over 30 tons. But then again, that's a theory. But in this battle, what plays in the favor of the accurate Rex is that unlike Rexy, he duped it out with other Rexes. There have been numerous specimens like Stan which show scarring and bones which have healed from combat. It reflects in reality that not all battles ended in death and that the Rex was highly experienced when it came to combat. But yes, yes, I hear you. Rexy took on the Tarbosaurus. I mean, that's similar to our Rex, isn't it? Well, 
She only scraped through that fight due to loss of focus by the Tarbosaurus. And you have to take into account that the Tarpa was fairly smaller than Rexy. Being that's the case, Rexy should have been easily capable of taking down the Tarbosaurus with minimum difficulty. Since the most experienced Rexes would have likely encountered and fought each other over resources, territories, and mating rights, I'd say that our real specimen is more attuned to taking on other Rexes than our girl Rexy. All right, so who wins this battle of fiction against reality? Well, I think it's a lot closer than most people think. Taking a look at the overall stats, we can see that Rexy would take speed, agility, lifting and ramming strength, intelligence, as well as barely taking height and length, which to be honest, wouldn't contribute much. Meanwhile, the real deal takes weight, durability, bite force, senses, and battle IQ. Now you may ask why certain categories went where. Well, I gave Rexy lifting and ramming strength due to the fact that she was capable of lifting up a six ton Indominus Rex and throwing it to the ground. Ramming strength also went to Rexy as she's been said to have one of the strongest skulls amongst the JP dinosaurs, as well as being much faster than the T-Rex, meaning she can pick up a greater momentum. If we also put it around the Indom, which was capable of smashing through fiberglass, which is pound for pound stronger than steel, well, we can see that Rexy outclasses the real Rex in headbutt capability. Yet, with examples of the real Rex being able to survive with broken bones, specifically in the neck, as well as tanking bites from other Rexes, which have a greater bite force than Rexy, it provides us with greater durability, especially if we're using ED Cope as the basis of it. To be honest, the major factor which I think keeps Rexy in this fight, despite Despite the massive weight difference is her speed and agility. Despite real Rexes still being agile, they certainly were not the level of what Rexy has displayed, especially ones the size of Cope. But if I'm going to be forced to pick a side, I'm going to have to choose the real Rex. It dealt with T-Rexes on a daily basis, and because of that, it would have been much more used to taking down other Rexes. Now sure, the speed and agility would become a bit of a problem throughout the fight, but I think with the overall weight and bite force, that eventually, Rexy will slip up and lose. We just see too many times that Rexy struggles with taking on other large theropods, and hence, I just feel like the real Rex takes the win. However, I want to say, if we took into account proper power, scaling with exact calculations then the outcome is completely different placing them at like war building city level or whatever you can definitely have rexy winning more times than not for example buck destroying a bus or indom breaking the fiberglass would likely calculate to many tnt tons of force but doing that not that fun there's no challenge in that why have that when we can have a fun battle anyways i hope you all enjoyed this video it was definitely a bit weird putting a real life dinosaur against a fictional one but if you all would be interested in this becoming a series then comment below as always don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time see ya